Good morning to everyone. Happy Easter to you. Please be seated. So it's lovely to see everyone this morning. Um, a couple of words of explanation. We do have a cross and everyone is invited to put a flower on the cross to represent the fact that this is a very special day for us. Um, hopefully you'll have received notices either by email or in the foyer. If not, there are some spare ones. A couple of things to draw your attention to. Um, first of all, to say thank you for everyone who helped with the craft event yesterday. Um, I didn't do any of the organizing, but it was good to be there and to share with some of the young people who are in our community. Um, I should also let you know that there's quite a lot of stuff from Zero Waste who meet in our premises on a Saturday. Anything that's left, we usually pick up on a Sunday. It's usually bread. We've extended the range this morning to bread, potatoes and carrots. And what you see on the trolley is just the tip of the iceberg. There are a lot. So the homework for everyone today is to take home carrots and potato and do something creative with it. Uh, that's the challenge. Uh, refreshments will be served in the parlour after the service. Uh, tea, coffee and, in a break with tradition, a lot of chocolate because there's stuff left over from yesterday. So do come through after the service into the parlour. So I'm delighted that David, our Reverend David Goodwin, is leading our communion service this morning and I'd like to hand over to him. Quiet darkness before the chorus of the dawn. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Glory and grace. With authority beyond measure. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Death is not the end. And life in all its forms. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. to him, Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah.
Let us pray. The dark to the dawning of a new day. The sun rises quietly over our waiting world. The wonder of a new day and a new world is born in our faith and in our understanding. We come before our Creator and Redeemer. Alleluia. Come despairing at our brokenness, weeping with our disappointments, doubting that things will get better. Jesus has turned our despair into hope, our weeping into joy, our doubt into he grants us the assurance that we are forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. God of surprises, by the raising of your Son, you have destroyed death and overturned despair. Fill us with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to new life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Over these past few weeks of Lent, we've been reflecting around the country on the theme of unbounded Verses from Charles Wesley's great hymn, Love Divine. Thinking of a love that doesn't stay within the line. A love that's not bounded by any human limits. And as we got to Holy Week, it seemed that that love was bound. Put to death. Today we celebrate that God's love is not bounded even by death itself. He has risen triumphant and victorious, but his love is indeed unbounded. In the words of Charles Wesley's hymn, we are lost in wonder, love and praise. So let's rejoice in that wonderful Easter message sing together again. See what a morning, gloriously bright, the dawning of hope.
hear our scripture readings, a reading from the prophecy of Isaiah and then the Easter Sunday Gospel from St. Mark. Reading from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever, the Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. second reading is from Mark chapter 16 verses 1 to 8. Jesus has risen. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the woman went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Amen. Many stories and dramas I'd like to finish with a cliffhanger, a moment of mystery that leaves you waiting, wanting to come back and see what happens next. Other stories come to a conclusion that tie up all the loose ends. You think, oh well, that's it then. Each of the Gospel writers tells the Easter story in their own way. Mark's Gospel ends with a moment of mystery. So much so that over the years people have tried to fix it by adding their own endings. When we read the witness of the other Gospels, know that fear and bewilderment turn to proclamation of the 
news that Christ is risen. In Mark's story, we're not quite there yet. Maybe before rushing on, worth lingering in that moment. The women went out from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. They said nothing to anyone. Literally in the Greek it says, they were afraid for. That's just how Greek language works. So we like to turn it around. They said nothing to anyone for. They were afraid. What a strange way end the gospel. The most important story in the whole book just stops hanging there. We're left waiting. Several ancient versions of the gospel attempted to solve this problem by adding another ending. If you look in your Bibles, you might find a, a couple of alternative endings to Mark's Gospel. But the style of writing is different. It's clear that they were added by another hand. Someone who wanted to make it a proper ending. Like it says, we can't have this. We need a conclusion. We need to wrap it up. We need to roll the credits. Play the, the wonderful music. We can't have said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. But in a world full of war and struggle, of anxiety and anger, how can we hear the message of the resurrection? Yes, it shows us how the power of God brokenness of humanity. Perhaps we can identify with the feelings of the women in Mark's story. They have come to grieve the one they have lost. They need time to make sense of all that they have experienced. They have seen Jesus die Now they discover that the tomb is empty. It doesn't make sense. It takes time for them to realise that in a world of despair, they have hope that in life and in death, they belong to God. That nothing in life or death can separate them from the love of God. Christ Jesus. Perhaps we too, as individuals, as churches, as nations, time to make sense of all that may be happening to us. So, we do need Mark's version of the story. This morning we stand before the mystery of the empty tomb, slowly letting the message sink in. He has been raised. He is not here. He is going ahead of you. Maybe we need the to take root within us, as imperceptibly as a seed breaks into life beneath the earth hidden place. It happens every spring, shrouded in mystery. You can't see it happening at first. Yet the tender shoots break through the soil and new life emerges. 
likewise the life of God is hidden within us. It might take time to emerge and flourish, but it is there. Every gospel account of the resurrection tells us that this most important event in history happened in total darkness. Sometimes in the hours of that Sunday morning, a great mystery transpired its secret. No sunlight illuminated the event, no human being witnessed it. Even now, centuries later, no human narrative can contain it. The moment of resurrection is a mystery known only to God. Or we can know somehow in an ancient tomb, God worked in secret, bringing life out of death. Somehow from the heart of loss and misery, God enacted salvation. The echo of that mystery was found our reading from Isaiah, chapter 26, where God speaks into a world that seems to be covered by a shroud in darkness. The prophet speaks the promise that God will swallow up death forever, wipe every tear from his people's eyes. I like the ending of Mark's Gospel. The honour the mystery it invites me to wait, really take in what happened on that first Easter morning. It doesn't leap to explanation or theories about what did or it doesn't rush invites us to wait. Let it permeate, take root, silence. But can you hear the Easter message? All that seem to have been cruelly taken from us will be restored. Christ is risen. The grave is empty. God's love is unbound. Death's defeat is sure. Whether or not you can quite bear this great truth right now doesn't matter. Christ has given it to you. The message is for you. He has been raised. So look after it as you journey on from today. Christ is risen. He is risen in you. Hallelujah. Let's sing together again. He is alive. Let Christians say the cross stands empty to the sky.
Ray is going to lead us in our prayers. So we're going to do things slightly different today. In that, um, we're going to have some time of reflection as part of our prayers of intercession. Um, so I will kind of give you some prompts. <laughs> um, but then we're going to use um, a Teze song, um, Oh Lord, Hear My Prayer, uh, just to kind of give us some time to gather our thoughts um, as we pray together. Gracious God, we pray for the church throughout the world. May each church a sign of resurrection. Make each church a sign of resurrection, reflecting your life. remember those who have gone before us, whose lives give us encouragement and hope. We pray that you will bring us with them to share in your glory. name 
name of Christ. Amen. festival day like Easter, it seems appropriate to celebrate our faith by sharing in the words of the Creed. One of my uh, uh, teachers at Theological College encouraged us to see the Creed not just as a, an intellectual statement, but as an act of praise and a celebration of all that we do. So I invite you, if you're able, to stand Let us profess the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not known, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under conscious power suffered death and was saved. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Lord, the giver of life, Proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We want for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Share the peace. So I invite you in a moment to share the peace with one another in whatever way feels comfortable to you. Especially those who might not want to share a handshake, so it's a handshake or a wave, whatever feels comfortable. The risen Jesus came and stood among the disciples and said, Peace be with you. They rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. Peace of the risen Christ be always with you and also in the living.
So we prepare now to gather at the Lord's table. During our communion hymn, the offertory uh, will be received. I come with joy, a child of God, forgiven, loved and free, the life of Jesus to recall, in love laid down. Union prayers today have come from a new additional order of service for communion for Easter produced by the Methodist Church. So we come to God in thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Gracious God, in the beginning you created the heavens and the earth. You gave us life and purpose and a desire to seek you. You gave your light to shine in the darkness and 
promise that it would never be overcome. For Jesus, your Son, the Word was made flesh, revealing your glory. Through his life, death and resurrection, we have life in his name. Early on the first day of the week, women came to the tomb and found that the stone had gone. You removed barriers that stop us from meeting you and give salvation for the life of the whole world. Therefore, with your people throughout the ages, the faithful of every time and place, we praise your holy name, say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. The night that he was handed over, Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way he took the cup after supper saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink. It remembers of me. We offer all that we have and all that we are. Breathe your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine and upon us, that we may share in the resurrection life of Christ. In the death and resurrection of your Son, Pray that you will raise us up on the last day. With all your people, we may praise and worship you forever. Through Jesus Christ, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Heavenly Father, now and always. Amen. Say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom our and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's resurrection until he comes. Open our eyes that we may see him and believe him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We meet the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. Draw near.
above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. As you to know that our final hymn this morning is Thine be the glory, risen conquering Son, endless is the victory, thou our death.
God who has begun the new creation, the raising of Jesus Christ, continue to reshape our humanity and our world. May the blessing of God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Hallelujah. Go in joy and peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah.